it's 2023. You know what? Seriously, I wish the best for all of you in the new year and make this the best year of your lives. I really hope that for all of you. But here's what I do know. It's a new year. Still don't matter. Charlotte Flair still sucks. I don't get it. I never have gotten it. I never will get it. Why the WWE is so freaking obsessed with shoving her down everybody's throats like this, and why so many fans just sit back and take it. Like, I understand when we're talking about wrestling fans, WWE fans, I use really kind of this creepy subculture when it comes to some of the women's wrestlers. Like the fawning over the Sasha Bankses and the Becky Lynches and Mandy Roses and so forth, right? Like, we know what we're dealing with here a little bit. But you put Charlotte Flair in that same category? Charlotte Flair is a fucking female Randy Orton. With more plastic surgeries and less in-ring talent. Like, there are so many similarities here, it just boggles the freaking mind. And so many people used to complain about just how boring his piss Randy Orton was and how overforced and overpushed he was. Yet they'll sit there, yay, Charlotte, she fucking sucks. And you know goddamn good and well that she does. So imagine my complete lack of utter surprise when on the last SmackDown of the year, Ronda Rousey is going to have a match and oh boy, can you feature that? It's going to be against Charlotte Flair, and it's going to be for the SmackDown Women's Championship, and you should have at this point seen what the fuck was coming. They couldn't even wait for a pay-per-view. They couldn't even wait. They couldn't help them goddamn selves. Like, look, I'm not huge on Sasha Banks. I think she's a decent talent. But to sit there and tell me that she is so much lower on the totem pole than a Charlotte Flair would give me a fucking break here. Well, this company just can't help themselves. What is this now for Charlotte Flair? 14 times a women's champion? Like, that's not happening because she's great. That's happening because her previously, previous 13 title reigns absolutely sucked. Oh, she's coming back. She's a new and improved Charlotte Flair. What, did she get more fucking plastic surgery? That's the type of chick that you want to elevate on a pedestal? Every time she goes away, she comes back with some other type of work done? I think I saw, what was it, Bubba Ray talking, Bully Ray talking about what makes her so great. What makes her so fucking great? Is it the lack of charisma? Is it the lack of personality? Is it the lack of mic skills? Is it the chameleon-like physical appearance that always changes every time she takes some time off because she's got some more goddamn work done? Is it the sloppy, botchy, bitch fest matches that she participates in? Is it the ridiculous ass-looking moonsault that she never seems to make look and connect correctly? Like, please tell me, what the fuck is it? Like, she has done nothing to evolve, she's done nothing to change, and of course now the WWE initially, until they realize a couple weeks later, well, this is stupid, it doesn't work, they're going to try and push her in the fucking baby face. Because that's what the people really deep down want to do, right? is they want to cheer for this overforced, overpushed piece of crap. That's what they want to do. Give me a freaking break. I'm just terrible. So yeah, it's New Year, same sorry-ass, overrated, suck-ass Charlotte Flair. And even then, I can only go but so far in terms of the ranting and raving here, because anything and I mean literally about anything at this point, would have been better than rolling into 2023 with Ronda Rousey as one of your featured women's champions on your shows. Holy hell. Like gripes about Charlotte Flair aside, she is infinitely better than this version of Ronda Rousey. What in the Sam hell happened? Now look. Ronda is more about being an attraction, like she's, you know, former baddest woman on the planet until she ran up against a woman that could actually hit her in the mouth and then she folded like house cards, right? I mean, that's what happened. Um, but she came in, like, she brought mainstream 
exposure, like mainstream following, mainstream attention to the WWE initially was introduced relatively well, you know, like in small doses and as kind of a featured special attraction, like you could get some mileage out of Ronda Rousey. She could bring something to the table. I don't know what the hell it is, but like you watched the 2022 version of her and she was terrible. Like, was she phoning it in because the WWE is saying, hey, you still got time on your contract and we're going to pay you like we actually need you to work and we want to get some return on investment, God forbid. Like, was it that? Was it something else? Or did they just feature her in an even worse fashion? I can't figure out what it is. It could be a combination of all those. I don't really know. But did she have any really good matches this year? Did she have any really good moments I would think, I would think, when you look at Ronda Rousey in 2022, she had more cringeworthy moments than moments that made you go, wow. And how, how did that happen? Like, how she, could she be so cringe? To the point where I feel like, as a talker and as a personality, she's gotten even worse. Like, there was always, like, a ridiculous overacting to her. And, and maybe sometimes you get away with that a li little bit in wrestling, but you got to tone that down at some point. But she is just unbelievably bland and bad when it comes to telling a story on the microphone, being a charismatic personality. She just doesn't have it. And as bad as Charlotte Flair is, and she absolutely is, she absolutely sucks. I couldn't imagine at this point looking at Ronda Rousey and saying, I'd rather watch her in a match, I'd rather watch her as a champion of the women's division than I would Charlotte Flair. Like, that's how bad the mighty have fallen. That's how bad things have gotten. That even I, as much as I don't like that overrated piece of crap Charlotte Flair getting pushed because of her daddy and her last name and all this other crap, Randy Orton of the female division, that's exactly what the fuck she is. There are two opinions you can have about that. You can like it and agree with it, or you can disagree with it and be wrong. But Ronda Rousey, like how could you do something more and get worse at it? I was never expecting her to overpower you in terms of her tremendous charisma, overpower you with her mic skills, overpower you with the magnificence of her technical wrestling and anything like that. But not only has she not done that, not only has she not gotten better, not only has she not just stagnated, she's gotten worse. So frankly, it doesn't bother me as much as I want it to that they had Charlotte beat her like that. Because could you really go into WrestleMania at this point with Ronda Rousey carrying one of your women's championships? At this point, do you even want Ronda Rousey to be on a match at WrestleMania? Yikes. So yeah, Charlotte Flair sucks. She's bad. That's one level. But then there's Ronda Rousey bad. And it's disappointing. Because the way she came in initially, like I said, I talked about like, some of the overacting and like the makeup looks ridiculous and the, some of the facials she would give is like, and then you stop, like that's cringe. But then there were other things you could look at and say, hey, she could do some things in the ring. She brings a physicality and a believability to her matches and that's good, like you could gravitate toward that. She does have a bit of a badass persona and she didn't even really have that anymore. It just felt like she didn't care, phoned it in. I could be totally wrong about why she was bad in 2022 but I would think most everybody agrees she was really bad in 2022 and even worse than Charlotte Flair on Charlotte Flair's worst day.